Polar Coordinates You should have learned about polar coordinates in a previous course, probably a trigonometry course. So we're going to start with a, a quick reminder of some of the basics with polar coordinates and then we're going to delve into the calculus of polar coordinates. So the basic idea is we choose a point in the plane that we call the pole or the origin and we label it with O. We draw a ray starting at O called the polar axis. This axis corresponds to the positive x-axis in Cartesian coordinates. If P is any other point in the plane, we let R represent the distance from O to P, and we let theta be the angle between the polar axis and the line OP. Then the point P is represented by the ordered pair R theta. We use the convention that an angle is positive if measured in the counterclockwise direction from the polar axis and negative in the clockwise direction. We can also extend the meaning of the polar coordinates, r theta, to the case in which r is negative by understanding if r is positive, then the point r theta lies in the same quadrant as theta. However, if r is negative, then r theta lies in the quadrant opposite theta. So for our first example, let's plot the point 2, negative pi over 6, in polar coordinates. We'll find two other pairs of polar coordinates for that point, one with r positive and one with r negative. All right, so first, when we have a polar grid like this, what we need to understand is uh, that this gives us, instead of x's and y's, it gives us rays representing the angles. Uh, and those concentric circles are often meant to be various radii. So for example, we see what one, two, three marks, this is pi over two, and this is pi, three pi over two, and then back to two pi. So then here's pi over six, and pi over three, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, etc. And so then this would be the counterclockwise direction. So measuring this angle measures pi over 6. But since we're asked to plot the point 2 negative pi over 6, well then from 0, from our polar axis, we would want to go the clockwise direction. And so this is the ray negative pi over 6. And we want to plot the point 2 negative pi over 6, so let's put in a little bit of scale here. I'll say that this one, the second circle, that's radius 1, there's radius 2, radius 3, radius 4 to radius 5. So the point 2 negative pi over 6 would be on the, set, on the circle with radius 2 at the angle negative pi over 6. So there's the point 2, negative pi over 6. We're also asked to find two other pairs of polar coordinates for the point, one with r positive and one with r negative. Well, I could, so here, here's, a, here's another polar, set of polar coordinates. I could go around the circle counterclockwise to that point. And so then the radius would still be 2, and the angle would be 11 pi over 6. So there's one with r positive. And we're also asked to find one with r negative. So what I could do is I could go on the other side. If I were to get to this point, I can think of this point as 2, 5 pi over 6. And so then the point negative 2, 5 pi over 6, would also be that original point. All right, because as mentioned earlier, uh, if r is negative, 
then the point r theta lies in the quadrant opposite theta. So negative 2 5 pi over 6 lies in the quadrant opposite the measure 5 pi over 6. This diagram represents the relationship between polar and Cartesian coordinates. So if we just think of this angle theta uh, and radius r, and we can see the corresponding x and y co uh, coordinates, and so this point, this point can be uh, represented with either polar coordinates, r theta, or Cartesian coordinates, x and y. Now we want to be able to uh, convert between them in either direction. So if we want, if we're given polar coordinates and we want to go to Cartesian coordinates, we often use the relationship that the x coordinate is given by r cosine theta, and then the y coordinate is given by r sine theta. And you can see this to be true just based on right triangle trigonometry. Notice in this right triangle, and at least if we're talking about the acute angle theta, but we can generalize beyond that. Notice that the cosine of theta in this diagram is x over r, and so then multiplying through by r, x equals r cosine theta. And similarly, we see that sine theta is y over r, and so then y is equal to r sine theta. If instead we want to go from Cartesian to polar coordinates, we often say that from the Pythagorean theorem, r is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared, and then the tangent of theta is y over x. Again, we know that tangent theta is y over x from right triangle trigonometry, and again we can extend that beyond the right triangle uh, using you know, what we've learned in trig. Um, we'd have to be careful there with the tangent uh, theta. Remember that will only give you an angle between uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it will not tell, it will not always give you the exact theta that you want. Uh, you would have to then maybe extend beyond that to find the exact theta you need. Alright, so now let's plot the point with polar coordinates, negative 3, 2 pi over 3, and then we'll find the Cartesian coordinates of that point. All right, so negative 3, 2 pi over 3. Well, 2 pi over 3 is this ray. And so then, uh, let's use again the scale that two circles gives us one unit. All right, so then the point 3, 2 pi over 3, would be here. That's 3, 2 pi over 3, but since it's a negative 3, 2 pi over 3, then we would go to the quadrant opposite this is the point, negative 3, 2 pi over 3. Now, if we're asked to find the Cartesian coordinates of the point, the x-coordinate of the point would be given by r cosine theta. And so that would be negative 3 cosine of 2 pi over 3. So that would be negative 3. The cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half from trigonometry, and so that's positive 3 halves. The y coordinate is r sine theta, and so that would be negative 3 sine of 2 pi over 3. So that would be negative 3. The sine of 2 pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. And so that would be negative 3 root 3 over 2. And so then the Cartesian coordinates of the point would be 3 halves, negative 3 root 3 over 2. And if we just look at the signs, S-I-G-N-S, the signs of those coordinates, it seems reasonable because if we think of how our Cartesian system is, that would put us in the fourth quadrant where the coordinates should be positive, negative. All right, let's kind of go in the other direction. Here we're told the Cartesian coordinates of a point are negative 1 comma square root of 3. Find polar coordinates with r greater than 0 and theta between 0 and 2 pi. 
and we'll plot the point. All right, so negative one, that's my x, and root three is my y. Well then r is, the, is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared. And so that would be then the square root of negative one squared plus square root of three squared. And so that would be the square root of one plus three, which is four, square root of four, so r is two. And tangent theta is y over x. So then tangent theta is root three over negative one. So then tangent theta is negative root three. All right, so now remembering what I've learned in trigonometry, tangent theta is root three. If you think of that, if you think of your special angles, square root of three, I can think of as the square root of three over two over one over two. And so where's the tangent? Remember that that we can sort of think of the tangent as the sine over the cosine. And so where is the, t where is the sine root three over two? Where's the cosine one half? Well, that would be at um, pi over three wait a second, we need it to be negative. So where is the tangent negative? The tangent is negative in quadrant two or in quadrant four. Now thinking about this point, negative one root two, I know that this is in quadrant two. And so then I know that the theta we want here is then two pi over three. So then the polar coordinates are two, two pi over three. And so that would be the point, that would be this point right here. There's two, two pi over three. So once we have, once we understand how to plot points, we can then sketch curves that are defined by polar equations. So here's a, a fairly straightforward example. We're asked to sketch r equals four sine theta, and we'll find the Cartesian equation for the curve. All right, so if r is equal to four sine theta, then what we can do is create a table of values, substituting for theta and finding the corresponding r values. So if theta is zero, then the sine of theta is zero, and four times zero is zero. And if theta is pi over six, the sine of pi over six is a half, and so then r would be four times a half, which is two. If theta is pi over three, the sine of pi over three is root three over two, which is about 0.85, and 0.85 times four is about 3.4. Sorry, I was a little mistaken there. The sine of pi over three is approximately, I said 0.85, it's about 0.87. Not a huge difference, uh, but 0.87 times four is 3.48. So that's about 3.5. All right, pi over two, the sine of pi over two is one, so multiplying that by four is four. Two pi over three, the sine is, uh, again, 0.87, so multiplying that by four, we would again get 3.5. Five pi over six, the sine is positive one half, so we'd have a two here. And then the sine of pi is zero, and so our, our value would be zero. Seven pi over six, the sine is negative one half, so multiplying by four would be negative two. 4 pi over 3, the sine is negative 0.87, multiplying by 4 would be negative 3.5. 3 pi over 2, the sine is negative 1, multiplying by 4 is negative 4. And similarly, we would get negative 3.5, negative 2, and back to 0. Okay, so what we see here is that as the radius as theta, I should say, changes from zero to pi over two, the radius increases from zero to four. And specifically, uh, so here's r equals four, 
And so let's see, I've got 0, the radius is 0, and then at pi over 6, the radius is 2. At pi over 3, the radius is 3.5. At pi over 2, the radius is 4. At 2 pi over 3, the radius is 3.5. At 5 pi over 6, the radius is 2. And at pi, the radius is 0. And so what's happening here? Well, the radius is at 0. It begins at 0 and increases to 4, and then begins to decrease and back to 0. Well, then what happens? At 7 pi over 6, the radius is not 2, but negative 2. At 4 pi over 3, the radius is not 3.5, but negative 3.5. At 3 pi over 2, the radius is not, neg is not 4, but negative 4. And notice how it's just tracing that curve again. And so we just get that same circular curve repeated. So r equals 4 sine theta is the gra if we graph it, it graphs as a circle. Now, could we find a Cartesian equation for this curve? Well, of course. Now, just from looking at it, we might say, well, this is a circle. So we know from algebra how to find the equation of a circle. Uh, remember the equation of a circle is often given by x uh, minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And so if we could find the center and the radius, well, the center appears to be at 0, 2 with a radius of, with a radius of 2 radius appears to be 2, and so it looks to me like this is x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 4. Now let's show how we can do that analytically. Alright, so if r is equal to 4 sine theta, now earlier I said that we could use the fact that r, remember we had r equals x, the square root of x squared plus y squared. Well, notice if I square both sides, I'd get r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Well, I don't have an r squared, I have an r. So what I'm going to do is multiply through both sides of this equation by r yielding r squared is equal to 4r sine theta. So then r squared is x squared plus y squared, and r sine theta is y. So I've got x squared plus y squared is equal to 4y. Well then x squared plus y squared plus 4y, I'm sorry, that should be a minus 4y, equals 0. And now I can complete the square. y squared minus 4y, if I add 4 here and add 4 on the right, that completes the square, and I get x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 4. The equation of a circle, center 0, 2, radius 2. Now that was a, a long process, sketching that curve. Uh, and it can be a fairly long process if you use this technique with the table and plotting points. So let me show you another technique now that may make life easier if you're asked to sketch a, a polar curve. So here's the uh, same exercise, r equals 4 sine theta, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to consider the Cartesian graph y equals 4 sine x. All right, so if you remember how to graph y equals 4 sine x, Cartesian graph that would have an amplitude of 4 and a period of 2 pi. 
And so if you remember how back from trigonometry, since it's a sine curve, it starts at the zero, it starts at the center and ends at the zero. Halfway between it's at a zero. And it first goes to a maximum and later on goes to a minimum. So this is the Cartesian graph. And now what I'm going to do is take that Cartesian graph and translate it to the polar graph. So again, we have radius of 4. And so what happens is, as the radius, the, the radius, so now this was in terms of y and x, but now what I'm going to do is think of this as theta. I'm going to think of that as my theta, and this is my r. I'm going to think of the horizontal as my theta and the vertical as my r. And so what I see is, as theta increases from 0 to pi over 2, all right, so 0 as, sorry about that, as theta increases from 0 to pi over 2, radius increases to uh, from 0 to 4. All right, so pi over 2, and the radius increases. Now don't draw lines, but instead draw curves doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get a rough sketch. So there, notice the radius increased to 4. And then, from pi over 2 to pi, the radius decreased back to 0. And just from that should be enough information to give you a, an idea of what the curve looks like. Let's see another example like that. All right, here we're asked to graph, or to sketch r equals 3 plus 6 cosine theta. So I'm going to think y equals 3 plus 6 cosine x. Now, this one's a little tougher. The period is still 2 pi because there's no transformation on the x. So I'll put 2 pi here and, and pi. Now, we have a vertical shift of 3 and an amplitude of 6. So remember what that does is, it puts my sort of center line here at 3, and since the amplitude is 6, my maximum is at 9 and my minimum is at negative 3. The cosine curve starts at a maximum and ends at a maximum. Halfway between beginning and end, so halfway through the period it's at the minimum. Halfway from the beginning to the middle it's at the center and from the middle to the end it's again at the center. And so here is the Cartesian graph. Now we're going to focus on a few different important points here. Notice that there are zeros. Notice that the curve crosses the x-axis and so there are zeros to this function and so again now remember we're going to think of this as our r as, as our theta, right? We're going to think of the x-axis as our theta and the y-axis as our r. So our maximum r value is 9 so that means I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'll see, so we'll call that a radius of 10. Alright, so when theta is 0, the radius is 9. So we have this starting point. And I know that when theta is, this would be pi over 2. I know that when theta is pi over 2, the radius is 3. 1, 2, 3. So I know I've got to get to this point. And I know that the radius is decreasing. But don't, don't do this. Don't draw a line, because this isn't a linear curve. Okay. Instead, draw a smooth, sort of circular curve. Now, what happens between pi over 2 and pi? Well, be somewhere between pi over 2 and pi, the radius goes to 0. So the radius has got to go to 0. And then when theta is pi, the radius is negative 3. 1, 
2, there's negative 3. So the radius goes through 0 and then goes to negative 3. Then what happens? The radius comes back to 0 and back to positive 3 at 3 pi over 2. So it sort of does a mirror image. It comes back through the 0 and then is back to 1, 2, 3, positive 3. So something like that. And then the radius increases back to 9. And so we get a shape that looks roughly like this. So this is called a rapid sketching technique. Now, if I ask you to sketch a curve like this, this is what I want, right? I want this graph. You can use the Cartesian graph to help you get there. Now, our calculators can create polar graphs. So let me just show you how to do this on the 89. All right, so on the 89, uh, let me clear that out. We don't need that anymore. If you go to your, we have to go into our mode, and it's still in parametric from earlier. Let me switch that to polar, hit enter, and hit enter again to save. All right, now if I hit green and F1 to bring up the Y equals screen, and clear that out, it's in the form R equals. So R equals 3 plus 6 uh, cosine, and we need theta. And the theta, to get there, it's, it's above the caret key over on the right, so you hit green and caret. All right, so 3 plus 6 cosine theta, I'll hit enter. All right, let me check my window. So my window is going from 0 to 12.56. So that's like 12.56 is about 4 pi. So I'm just going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And I've got an x min and x max, a negative 7 and 7. Well, I know that I, I need my r is going to go out to it all the way up to 9. So let me go from negative 10 to 10. Oops, on my theta step, I, I clear, hit the wrong thing. For my theta step, I think a good idea for theta step is pi over 30. I think that's what we use. I think that's a good setting. All right, so for x min, let's, let's just do negative 10 to 10 on the x's and on the y's, negative 10 to 10 as well. All right, let's see what the graph looks like. Hit green, F3. All right, and we see that basic shape, right, that same shape. If you wanted it to look more square, then you hit zoom square, so zoom 5 and that'll give you the more square look. All right. And you know, my sketch isn't perfect, um, but it, it gives me a rough idea of what the curve should look like. All right, so I should have drawn, right, if we look at what, what we just saw, a more appropriate sketch would be more rounded not quite as pronounced to the left of the pole okay now on a test if i ask you to do this without a calculator i'm going to look to see if you have the basic features did you get where it, it crossed through the or uh, the pole do you have the 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 bright basic shape for the curve doesn't have to be perfect okay but it's got to have the basic features all right let's go in the other direction find a polar equation for the curve represented by the Cartesian equation y equals x plus 1. So a polar equation we want something of the form r equals or some, sometimes we write it as r square equals. Well I'm going to replace y with r sine theta and x with r cosine theta. 
And so now what I'll do is I'll bring everything with the r to the left hand side. So r sine theta minus r cosine theta is 1. And now I can use some factoring to write the left hand side as r sine theta minus cosine theta. I'm sorry, r times the quantity sine theta minus cosine theta is 1. And now I can isolate r through division. And so r is equal to 1 divided by sine theta minus cosine theta. All right, so now some of the calculus. Suppose we wanted to find the tangent to a polar curve. And we're given r as a function of theta, and we want dy dx. We want the slope of the curve, we want the tangent to the curve at some point. Well, recall that y is a function, uh, y is equal to r sine theta. But wait a second, r is actually a function of theta. Similarly, x is r of theta cosine theta. So if we remember that information and what we've learned you know, from the chain rule, then dy dx we can think of as dy d theta over dx d theta. But now dy d theta, since y is a function of theta and is r of theta times sine of theta, here we have to use the product rule. So dy d theta would be r of theta times cosine theta plus dr d theta sine theta. Similarly, dx d theta would be r of theta times negative sine theta plus dr d theta cosine theta. Now often, just to make it look a little bit nicer, we will see this presented a little bit different. So dy dx I will write as dr d theta sine theta plus r cosine theta over dr d theta cosine theta minus r sine theta. Okay, but that's just from the chain rule and from uh, the product rule for derivatives. Find the slope of the tangent line to r equals 2 minus sine theta at theta equals pi over 3. All right, so what this means is we need dy dx. That's how we've understood slope. We need dy dx evaluated at theta is pi over 3. All right, so dy dx, that's dy d theta over dx d theta, which we just saw on the previous slide was dr d theta sine theta plus r prime, oh, sorry, it's, no it's not, dr d theta sine theta plus r cosine theta over dr d theta cosine theta minus r sine theta. All right, so now what about that dr d theta? dr d theta is just the simple calculus one derivative of r with respect to theta. And so the, if r is 2 minus sine theta, then dr d theta would be negative cosine theta. So this would give us then dr d theta negative cosine theta times sine theta plus r r is 2 minus sine theta 
times cosine theta to the denominator. dr d theta is again negative cosine theta times cosine theta plus minus Again, r is 2 minus sine theta, and cosine theta, uh, and sorry, r is again 2 minus sine theta, and now again times a sine theta. There's a lot to, a lot of places to make errors, and as you've already heard, I, I've stumbled a couple times. All right, now, we want to evaluate this at theta is equal to pi over 3. All right, so now if theta is pi over 3, remember, if theta is pi over 3, that's this angle, and so your point on the unit circle that you may use is 1 half root 3 over 2. All right, so negative cosine theta, that would be negative half sine theta root 3 over 2 plus 2 minus sine theta is root 3 over 2, cosine theta is a half, over negative cosine theta, negative half, cosine theta, positive half, plus 2 minus sine theta, 2 minus root 3 over 2, and sine theta is um, root 3 over 2. And again, I made an error here. This should have been a subtraction in the denominator. All right, so we've got a lot of terms here. Let's start simplifying. Negative 1 half times root 3 over 2. That's negative root 3 over 4 plus a half times 2 is 1 minus a half times root 3 over 2. So that's minus root 3 over 4. Denominator, negative 1 half times 1 half. That's negative 1 fourth minus uh, 2 times root 3 over 2, so that's minus a root 3, minus minus, so that's a plus, uh, root 3 times root 3 is 3, 2 times 2 is 4, so 3 over 4. All right, simplifying this, negative root 3 over 4, uh, you know what, let's get rid of the fractions. So now that I've got this simplified, I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator by 4, and that'll clear out all the fractions. So then this becomes negative root 3 plus 4 minus root 3 over negative 1 minus 4 root 3 plus 3. And so that simplifies as 4 minus 2 root 3 over 2 minus 4 root 3. Now, this would be fine for me, but, you know, if you checked, if this answer was in the textbook and you checked this in the textbook, it would be wrong, because notice that there's a common factor of 2 all over the place, right? I can divide, I can divide everything by 2, leaving 2 minus root 3 over 1 minus 2 root 3. And so that would be, that's the slope of the tangent line to the curve at that angle. All right, let's look at another exercise. We're asked to find the points on the curve where the tangent line is vertical or horizontal. All right, we're given the curve r equals cosine theta plus sine theta. Where is the tangent line vertical or horizontal? All right, so recall if we're thinking about you know, dy dx, we know that we have vertical when the dx is 0, horizontal when the dy is 0. All right, so vertical, let's start there. Where is the dx equal to 0? Okay, well. Again, the dx, well, that's dx d theta. So, in this case. All right, so where's dx d theta equal to zero? Well, dx d theta 
remember that dx d theta from what we saw in the previous couple of slides, the dx d theta, that's dr d theta, cosine theta, minus r sine theta. And we want that to equal to zero. All right, so now dr d theta, right, just the simple derivative, if our curve is given by r equals cosine theta plus sine theta, then dr d theta is negative sine theta plus cosine theta. All right, so dr d theta, that's negative sine theta, cosine theta, times cosine theta, minus r, now r is cosine theta plus sine theta, times sine theta, and we need this to equal zero. All right, so let's apply the distributive property. There should be a, there should be a plus sign in there. All right, so applying the distributive property, we have negative sine theta cosine theta plus cosine square theta minus sine theta cosine theta minus sine square theta is equal to zero. All right, so notice I've got a cosine square theta and a minus sine square theta. All right, so let's see, cosine square theta minus sine square theta. And notice that the other two are like terms. So I can write that as minus two sine theta cosine theta is zero. All right, and if you remember a little bit of trigonometry, you should, re you could, you should probably see some identities here. Cosine square theta minus sine square theta, that's cosine two theta. All right, and minus and two sine theta cosine theta, that is sine two theta. So cosine two theta minus sine two theta equals zero. So then I can write that as uh, cosine, well, I can write this equation as, uh, I'll write it as sine two theta is equal to cosine two theta. And I'll divide through by cosine two theta, yielding tangent two theta equals one. All right, so then where is the tangent equal to one? So let's see then, two theta, where is the tangent equal to one? The tangent is one at the pi over four, is that, that's at pi over four, and five pi over four, and nine pi over four, and 13 pi over four, etc. And so then theta, dividing everything by two, that would be pi over eight, and five pi over eight, nine pi over eight, 13 pi over eight, etc. All right, using a similar process to find where the tangent line is horizontal, where it's horizontal, we want the dy d theta equal to zero. All right, and so again, from what, we've long, what we saw previously, the dy d theta, that's dr d theta, sine theta, plus r cosine theta, and we want that to be zero. All right, so dr d theta, that's negative sine theta, plus cosine theta, times sine theta, r is, again, cosine theta plus sine theta, again, times, times cosine theta, and we want that to be zero. Distributive property, negative sine square theta plus sine theta cosine theta plus cosine square theta plus sine theta cosine theta is zero. And again, if you look at this, I've got a cosine square theta and a minus sine square theta. And so that's a cosine two theta. 
and I have a plus sine theta cosine theta and another plus sine theta cosine theta and so that's going to be a plus sine 2 theta not 2 sine 2 theta but just sine 2 theta equals 0 and so now sine theta or sine 2 theta is negative cosine 2 theta dividing through by cosine 2 theta tangent 2 theta is negative 1 and so where is the tangent negative 1? Well that's in quadrants 2 and 4 so then 2 theta would be 3 pi over 4 uh, 7 pi over 4 11 pi over 4 15 pi over 4 etc. Dividing through by 2 theta is 3 pi over 8 7 pi over 8 11 pi over 8 uh, 15 pi over 8, etc. Alright, so it's vertical at these angles, at these values of theta, and it's horizontal on these angles. All right, that concludes the presentation for this section.